Hi, Math 30 ones This video here is going to be part two of graphing logarithmic functions. So remember that um, the lesson in the workbook corresponds to page 213. It's lesson eight in your student workbook. Remember, though, however, I'm using my own note package. So what I need you to do is I need you to look through your note package and find the page that has this question on it. Hopefully this part will be much quicker than the last part. There's just one new concept that I need to introduce. And then at the end of the lesson, we will do um, two extra diploma questions. So what the main focus of this lesson is going to be on, it's going to be on what's going to happen to the graph. So let's say I gave you um, y is equal to log base 3 of x. And then what we're going to examine is what would happen if I change that 3 to a third. So we're going to be graphing the original graph, which, which would be uh, y is equal to log base 3 of x. And then what happens if I take that base and I graph essentially the reciprocal of that base? So 1 third of x. Okay, so we're going to look at these two graphs and we're going to see how they are related. And then we're going to look at the graph of y is equal to log base 10 of x. And then we're going to change that base 10 to 1 tenth. And we're going to see if we notice a pattern. So what I want you to do is on your calculators, um, they actually have y is equal to log base 3 of x done for you. And let's just confirm these three points on our calculator. So take your graphing calculators out and go to y is equal to. And remember to uh, change the base to 3. You're going to go to the math button, scroll up to log base, which is A, enter that, and we're going to graph log base 3 of x. Here's what the graph of log base 3 of x looks like. And let's just confirm this x-intercept of 1, this point here at 3, 1, and this point at 9, 2. So in order to check those points, you're going to look at your table of values. And then there's the point 1, 0, which is our x-intercept. There was 3, 1. And there's 9, 2. Okay? So that graph is there. Now what I want you to do in y2, let's change that base of 3. And let's graph uh, y is equal to log base 1 third of x. So let's see what that graph will look like. Okay, so I'm going to change the 3 to a third. And the argument is going to stay as x. And when I graph that, this is what the graph looks like. So what I hope you are seeing is that these graphs are mirror images of each other. And they are mirror images in the x-axis. So what's going to happen is we are going to undergo a reflection. And it's going to be a vertical reflection in the x-axis. So what that means is if I was to do the new points on this graph, this point here is going to be invariant. This point at um, 3 comma 1 is going to go to 3 comma negative 1. And this point at 9 comma 2 is going to go down here. It's going to be reflected down here at 9 comma negative 2. If you were to draw this, log graph reflected in the x-axis. Your graph would look something like this, and that would be y is equal to log base one-third with the same argument of x. So again, y is equal to log base three and log y is equal to one-third. Those are reflections of one another. Let's just sort of observe that behavior and see if it holds true for log base 10 of x. So if I was to graph just that one on my calculator, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to actually get rid of this one. And let's graph and get some points for y is equal to log base 10 of x. Okay. So getting some points, I would have 1 comma 0, which I have. And then the other point that I would graph is 10 comma 1. Okay, so let's graph those two points there. So this is going to stay the same, and then I'm going to have a point at 10 comma 1. So if I was to graph this graph, 
it would look something like this. And that would be y is equal to log base 10 of x. Now, if I said, well, what would happen if I graphed this without even punching in on my calculator? They're going to be reflections of one another. So remember that that's going to remain my invariant point. And this point here, which was 10 comma 1, is going to be reflected down here. And this graph, okay, so it's a little bit off, but that's okay. This would be my graph of y is equal to log base one-tenth of x. So a few things. Based on these four graphs, they're going to ask about the domain and the range. Did the domain and the range change when I didn't, the only thing I changed in here was the base. So all of these domains did not change. All of these domains are x is greater than zero. And remember for the domain, so that argument must always be greater than zero. That was the restriction on the argument. So therefore, the domain of all of these graphs is x is greater than zero. I didn't change the h parameter at all, so the domain remains the same. For the range of all of these graphs, all of them are y belongs to the set of real numbers. The range did not change, okay? Um, next question, what is the x-intercept of all four of these graphs? So even though the screen graph was way off, I'm just doing this on my computer at home, all of the x-intercepts were invariant, and the x-intercepts for all of these graphs are x is equal to 1. So the x-intercept for all of these graphs, x is equal to 1, and that coordinate point would be x is 1 and y is 0. So those are the x-intercepts for all of the graphs. And then what is the equation of the vertical asymptote for all of these graphs? So remember the vertical asymptote, like I said, it comes from the argument. And the argument is always x is greater than 0. So x is greater than 0. Therefore, we have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0. So for all of those graphs, because we didn't tr uh, transform the graph left or right, the vertical asymptote is going to stay the same, and the vertical asymptote is going to be at x is equal to 0. And remember, it's, from, it's based on, so y is equal to log base b of x. This argument here must always be greater than 0. Okay. Let's look at uh, number seven. So what did you notice between y is equal to log base three of x and y is equal to log base one third of x? And hopefully what you noticed is that they are reflections in the x-axis. So they are reflections. in the x-axis. So vertical reflections in or about the x-axis. Okay, in general, what you need to know about logarithmic functions before they, we transform them is the following. So this is super important to know, really good to have on your study guide. So a few things. We know that the domain before the transformation is always going to be x is greater than 0, right? Whether we have a base of 1 or whether we have a base that's a fraction. So remember that the fraction would be um, the reflection. So for example, if I was to give you y is equal to log 2 of x, this would be the graph of y is equal to log 2 of x. And then this reflection would be the graph of y is equal to log one half of x. Okay, so again, going back up here, the domain for both of these graphs is x is greater than zero. The range of all of our log graphs are is going to be y er. Both graphs have an x-intercept of 1 comma 0, and then it will always have these shapes here. So you just have to memorize the shapes. So if your b value is greater than 1, this is what the shape would look like. And if our b value is a fraction, so it's less than 1 greater than 0, this would be the shape of our graph. Now something that's super important to note is this right here. 
a point that you could always get on your graph is going to be whatever your base is and y will be 1. So for example, this point here, if I said what's a point on this graph other than the x-intercept, which we know would be 1, 0, a point on this graph is you always are going to say when y is 1, we're always going to have an x at or whatever our base is, which is 2. So this graph here, if this is the graph of y is equal to log base 2 of x, this point, when y is 1, the b value is always whatever the base is. So to go over here, conversely, if I was to say, okay, well, what's the coordinate when x, or sorry, when y is 1, my x value is always going to be what my base is. So here, here's 1. When x is 1 half, that will be a point on my graph. So again, just to see if you understand this, if I said y is equal to log 10 of x, I know that that x-intercept is going to be 1, 0, right? That's going to be my x-intercept. That for sure is a point on my graph. But another point on my graph is when my y is 1, my y-coordinate is 1, the x-coordinate is whatever the base is. There's, so there's going to be a point at 10, 1, okay? So that's just um, really important to know this when y is 1, your um, x value is going to be whatever your base is. Okay, so let's look at this. Now, this should all be a review of part 1. So when we have y is equal to a log b of x, we know that the a parameter is a vertical stretch, and it's a vertical stretch. The stretch factor is by a factor of a. Right, so stretch factor of the absolute value of A. Then in the last video, we did Y is equal to log base B and within the function X minus H. So we know that that is going to be our H parameter. And our H parameter is going to be a horizontal translation, eights units left or right. So if we had Y is equal to log base B, of x minus 5, that h parameter is going to be 5, which is going to be a horizontal translation, 5 units to the right. Then what's super important about our um, h parameter is it is going to affect two things. It is going to affect our vertical asymptote, and it's going to affect the domain. Okay, so the H parameter affects those two things. So for example, this function here, if I said, well, what's the new domain and what's the new vertical asymptote of that function? We know that the argument must always be greater than zero. So X is greater than five. That is going to be the new domain of my graph. So the new domain of my graph is going to, of this transform function here, would be x is greater than 5. And then if I said, well, what's the vertical asymptote of that, that transform graph? The vertical asymptote is going to be at x is equal to 5. If I said, what's, what's the range of the graph? Transformations don't affect the range in log graphs, so the range is going to be the same. y belongs to the set of real numbers. Okay, our k parameter. We know that our k parameter is a vertical translation and it shifts our graph either up or down. So vertical translation either up or down. And then we also know that the k parameter will not affect our domain or range. Okay, our k parameter um, will affect the x-intercept but not the domain and range. Comparing these two things, so this is basically the last bit of information for part two, and then we'll do the uh, couple diploma questions. So if I was to compare the graph of y is equal to log of x squared versus y is equal to 2 log of x, so a few things that we need to compare. So this graph here has a domain. If I said, okay, well, what's the domain of this graph? The domain of this graph here is x cannot be equal to 0. So x cannot be equal to 0 because essentially what we're going to have is we're going to have a vertical asymptote here and the equation of that vertical asymptote is going to be at x is equal to 0. 
Now, a couple of things. If I said, what are the restrictions? So we know that our argument must always be greater than zero, right? So if I go over here, let's actually look at this one a bit first because this one's the easier of the two. I know that my argument must always be greater than zero, okay? Um, my argument can never essentially be negative. So the argument must always be greater than zero. So if I was looking at this graph here, if you graphed on your calculator y is equal to log 2 of x, this is the graph that you would see. And what we would see is we would see that the domain of this graph, so the domain of this graph is x is greater than zero based on the argument can never be less than zero. And there would be a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. So then, students might say, okay, if x has to be greater than zero, how come this graph here has this negative portion? And it has to do with this squared value. And what happens is essentially this graph has no restrictions. And the reason is, is because the argument is being squared. So we know that, yes, the argument has to be greater than zero, but let's say I give you an x value of negative 2, and you're plugging that in here. So what we would have is y is equal to the log of negative 2 squared, and any negative number, if you square it, what happens? It becomes positive. So y is equal to the log of 4. So there are no restrictions on this graph here with our negative numbers because any negative x value that I give you when you square it becomes positive. So that's why we could have negative x values here, right? And we have the positive x values on this side. And then our um, only restriction is that x cannot be 0. That's our vertical asymptote. But over here, our restriction is x must be greater than 0 because our argument is not being squared like it is in the first graph. Okay, so that's just comparing these two graphs. And again, it's just so important to remember that that argument must always be greater than zero. And that one exception is when our argument is being squared. Any negative number that you square will become positive. So that's the end of this lesson. And if you wanted to do two questions in your note package, we'll, I will do those now with you. So find um, in your note package, let's look for questions number 32. And I will do question uh, 22. Okay, so I will do these two with you right now. So question 32 from the diploma says that a student sketched the graph of y is equal to, so this is the original graph, or sorry, that's one of the functions that they graphed, and then they graph g of x, and this is the function here. And it says she also drew the asymptotes on the two graph using dotted lines. Okay, so a few things. Let's highlight this word asymptotes because what I want to do is I want to figure out what the asymptote of this graph would be, and I'm going to plot that, and what the asymptote of this graph would be. Because what the question is getting to is what is the intersection point of these two asymptotes? That's what it's asking. So from this graph here, this is our log graph, and remember that our log graphs have vertical asymptotes, and where are the vertical asymptotes in a log graph? They have to do with the argument. So with a log graph, they have, logs have vertical asymptotes, and it has to do with the argument. So x plus 3 must always be greater than zero. Our argument must always be greater than zero. So the domain of this graph is going to be x is greater than negative 3, and the vertical asymptote is at x is equal to negative 3. Okay? So if I was to uh, draw a Cartesian plane, so let's label our y-axis and our x-axis. At negative 3, there is going to be a vertical asymptote. So, illustrate that vertical asymptote using a ruler.
or vagina. What happened? So at negative three, I have a vertical asymptote right here. So x is equal to negative three. Okay, now this g of x, this is an exponential graph, okay? So you have to say g of x has a horizontal asymptote. So remember that exponential graphs have horizontal asymptote. And where do we always look for the horizontal asymptote in an exponential graph? So this is something you just have to remember. It always comes from that k value, right? And that k value is going to give you the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So we know that k is equal to 5. So on this exponential graph, without graphing it, because I don't know what my a value is, so I know it's greater than 1, you could, for example, if you really needed to see, you could plug, let's say, a 2 in there. And if you did that on your calculators and you said, okay, well, where's the horizontal asymptote? What would essentially happen is this graph would have a horizontal asymptote at um, y is equal to 5. So when the graph is exponential, it has a horizontal asymptote. The k value is where we get the equation of that horizontal asymptote. So going here, let's go to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's draw ourselves a line going through. I don't know why it's not doing it nicely, but let's draw ourselves a line uh, that's going to be our horizontal asymptote, and the equation of that line is y is equal to 5. Okay, so the question says the intersection point of the two dotted lines would be at what coordinate would those two uh, dotted lines or those two asymptotes intersect? My x value is negative 3, and my y value is 5. So that answer would be b. Let's look at this last question here. Okay, the graph of y is equal to 3x plus 2 is reflected in the line y is equal to x. So let's highlight that it's reflected in the line y is equal to x. Okay, so that original graph is going to be reflected in the line y is equal to x. So what should you know? If they are talking about something that's reflected in the line y is equal to x, they are talking about an inverse. So what do we do with an inverse? We interchange, remember, our x's and our y's. So that was the original graph there. y is equal to 3, x plus 2. If that graph is reflected in the line y is equal to x, I'm going to draw the inverse of that graph, which is going to be x is equal to 3y plus 2. Then what do we always do for inverses? We always interchange x and y, and after we interchange x and y, we solve for y. So we're solving for that exponent. So how do we solve for um, y, a variable, when, when it's in an exponent? We write this as a log. What would the log of this be? So the log of this would be log base 3, so the basis is the same, my argument is x is equal to whatever that exponent is, y plus 2. Then we need to solve for y, so we need to isolate y, so let's subtract 2 from each side, and what we get is y is equal to log base 3 of x minus 2. So they're going to take that and they're going to move it two units down, and then I go to my um, options and we have that option there and that would be the answer and that concludes uh, the video for part two from graphing logarithmic functions